everything that we have to undergo in this lifetime is all our own doing. Can't blame anyone. And of course, when it's a big group, then there's a mixed karma, collective karma. It's even more complicated. Yes, blame our karma, blame our shortage of marriage. That we don't have a better place. Okay, and don't even blame me. <laughs> this place I did not buy. I buy, I pay, but I did not buy it. Understand me? I did not choose it. Yeah, I wasn't here. And when I came back and have a look, I said, Oh my God. What to do? <laughs> then I make the best out of it for you. Okay, I bring some blessing here. I bring some heaven uh, connection for you. But you know, it's getting smaller also. It's time to move, but I don't know where yet. Okay, I'm still hearing, looking, eh? considering. Sometimes uh, I feel like going some place, and then suddenly some karma come, and then I feel disconnected with that place immediately, and then no more, no result. Understand? I'm still waiting for something else. If not, meanwhile, we are here, and then we have to keep going to our home, okay? You know, according to the time of your flight, and just keep going. Yes. That's only this is good already, yeah? Remember? Don't think if we change it, it's better. It's not necessary, just have to change our karma and increase our merit by doing good things, okay? By being more humble, more inward, contemplating and knowing things, knowing inside things, knowing the real cause of everything, knowing the truth. Don't blame me. All right, um, it's only two o'clock. It's very good. You want to hear some more hell stuff? <laughs> Yeah, oh, two, three. There are some others. Oh, you want to hear the. Uh, 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 huh? Want to go out? You want to go? No. What was it then? No? No? No. Did you eat yet? Yeah. Oh, you eat in the morning, right? This is a good time. But I cannot always do according to schedule, okay? I have my things to do, I have to meditate. If I can, I always come see you, yeah? Sometimes I see you very late in the night. I have to. <laughs> sometimes I can go early in the morning like this, or sometimes noon, sometimes afternoon. I'm not like a machine, okay? I can't always do what you think I must do or should do or on time. I can't. I'm sorry, but this is the way it is. Huh? Okay. Mm. I have work to do. I have uh, my meditation to do also. Mm, don't forget that. I have my business to run, and I don't forget that. <laughs> I have my dogs to take care. They are my best friend. They always love me no matter what. No matter what time I come, always so happy, like first time ever. Always so happy, happy. I have to. I have to say that they comfort me a lot all these years, yeah? Mm. Because dealing with all these negative things sometimes is not pleasant. You know, it, it saps your energy and enthusiasm. Hmm? Mm. So the dogs always love me and I thank them for that. So I have to take care of them now that they're older and, you know, less, um, less healthy. Like today, Benny had to gone to the clinic for checking up. Yeah. And the other day, Happy must go to doctor. You know, she doesn't look as beautiful as before. She has worn many spots on her body. You know, it's not as pretty. But I always love her. I say, Oh, you're always my princess. Yeah. I have to go and check out on them, you know, a couple of times a day, even though I don't live with them like practically in the same room anymore like before. Before I had less disciple, okay, less work to do, less business to run. Everything is multiply now, and I don't multiply myself. <laughs> That's the only problem. If I can multiply myself, then I can do better, huh? A physical body only one. The dogs I have to give them snacks and love. You know, they don't just eat food, but it's like you, they need love, yeah. And I have the duty to take care of them because I took them in, you know, and then they depend on me. 
I cannot just say, okay, now I'm busy, I don't want them no more, and they just... It's not like that. Detachment is different from being irresponsible and cruel. Do you understand me? That's why I told you that God doesn't bother testing me and doesn't try to test me, like take my dog away or do something, and I won't give him, okay? I don't care what, what sin it will be. I don't care if I don't go higher immediately, I don't care. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> any question or not? Any question today? Some water. Uh, water for, for you? No, no, for you. For me? Okay, good, good. Good idea. Drink. Good idea. <laughs> I didn't eat anything, so today I don't drink, it's okay too. Just yesterday I ate something, and soy sauce too, loud, too much, and I forgot to drink. But today it's something, it's not thirsty, but thank you. Very nice of you, very nice. What is this here? I don't know. Mm. It, it helps, huh? Yeah. And after that, we can go to hell again. <laughs> <coughs> we were just with the Buddha and go to heaven, you know? <laughs> and now maybe go to hell, have a look. Check in, check in. Mm? <laughs> hell is hot property, you know that? <laughs> Hot property. You understand what the word hot, hot property is? Demanded. Demanded. But hell is really, really hot property. Yeah. Hot. <laughs> God, you don't have humor. <laughs> I mean, you or oh God, they don't have humor. I don't mean God, you don't have humor. <laughs> All right, now. <clears throat> hot property. Number one, because it's hot, it's burning. Yeah? Number two, because a lot of people want it. Hard property, you see, demanded, very demanded, but it's never full, no matter how many beings go into it. <sighs> and the Bodhisattva keep life after life, because saving many beings already, but hell is still occupied, still the most wanted property. Isn't that a pity? Huh? We should want heaven, but this world is too great a uh, contamination. A lot of people fall, fall, fall and fall. So if you see any iron ring mountain, don't go near. <laughs> okay, I read already the name of the hell and and then did I read the Buddha praises. I did that the world honor one emitted a great light from his entire body. Ah, oh, yeah, I put it here. Meaning we read it up to here, right? Yeah. So now I will read you the chapter seven, saying benefiting the living and the dead. The earth store bodhisattva benefit. The living and the dead. Okay, huh? Yeah, of course, first I have heard that was the beginning of Sutra already, yeah? Anand from Anand. My God, can you imagine? Remember all this? The Buddha said he didn't even forget one single word. So everything he remembered, even maybe comma and, <laughs> and point. <laughs> okay. We should really thank the past. Masters, monks, and nuns, and scholars who have taken time to record what the Buddha is teaching after the Master's Nirvana, and also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time, and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. We have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present, and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and 
bow to the Sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten direction, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or you know beautiful cloth, and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say if I done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people they hear the names of the Buddha. According to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. At that time, Erstor Bodhisattva Mahasattva said to the Buddha, World honored one, I see that every single movement or steering of thought on the part of beings of Chambut Vipa in this world is an offense. Everything we think, everything we move, is some kind of offensive action. It has offens- offensive nature, yeah. and of course, then offensive effect to us. Beings tend to use up the wholesome benefits they gain. Many of them end up retreating from their initial resolve. If they encounter evil conditions, they augment themselves with every thought. They are like people trying to carry heavy rocks while walking through mud. Each step becomes more difficult and the rocks more cumbersome as their feet sink deeper. Did anybody try to find out for me who who translates and who prints all this? Because they don't say it here. So in case it's not the same place, then I will have to make some offering to them, you know, so that they can continue their work. And I dedicate all that merit to all the people who have no merit. It's not for me. I don't need to earn any merit from this. I don't do all these good things because I want to earn merit. Good marriage, bad marriage, it's just bondage here. Understand? I don't want any. Okay. If they meet a mentor, he may be strong enough to lighten or even totally remove their burdens, helping them thus. The mentor will urge them to step on solid ground, pointing out that once they reach a level place, they should remain aware of that bad path and never Traverse it again. Were on earth one, the bad habits of beings range from minor to major. Since all beings have such habits, their parents, relatives should create blessing for them when they are on the verge of dying in order to assist them on the road ahead. What road? Huh? What road ahead of a dying person? Heaven or hell? Yeah, correct. Yeah. That may be done by hanging banners and canopies, lighting oil lamps, reciting the sacred sutras, making offerings before the images of Buddhas or sages, especially the living one. Huh? Yeah. But if you don't have, then you do it from the, the ascended master. It might help somehow also, okay? If you're sincere, then of course you're connected with heaven, and that master could be able to help you. Hmm? Another way to assist them is by reciting the names of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and Patekya Buddha, so that the recitation of each name passes by the ear of the dying one and is heard in his fundamental consciousness. Even though the person is not dead yet, but already unconscious, he still hears it. You know, there is another mechanism, apart from the body, that hears and sees things around while you are dying, okay, or while you are unconscious. Therefore, if you keep practicing 
what I taught you at time of initiation, like reciting the holy names, for example, so constantly that even when you're unconscious, that mechanism outside of your body and consciousness still working and protecting you and helping you. That's why you don't say, okay, initiation is done, everything good, now I can do what I want, I don't have to meditate, Master is there. I cannot always eat for you. You eat, you grow up, okay? The spiritual food is the same, you eat. All right. Suppose the evil karma created by beings was such that they should fall into the bad destinies, I mean hell, huh? or worse, or maybe less than hell, but suffering path. If their relatives cultivate wholesome courses on their behalf when they are close to death, then their manifold offenses can be dissolved. Yeah. If relatives can further do many good deeds during the first forty-nine days after the death of such beings, then the deceased can leave the evil destinies forever. Isn't that cool? Yes. yes. That doesn't mean you continue to do bad things and then before you die, you call the initiate, come in and do good deeds for me. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> you are initiated, you are taught right from wrong. This is for the people who are ignorant, who have no refuge in anyone, who have nowhere to go, no one to believe, no one to rely on. So you are the one you probably have to help these kind of people mm -hmm. so that they don't fall to hell. Because if nobody prays for them at the time of death, nobody tries to do good things and forward is married to that soul, then he goes to hell or go to bad uh, reincarnation. That's why you see all the churches and all the religion, all the Buddhist monks and nuns always busy praying for the dead. My God, because the living don't listen. <laughs> so. When they're dead, like, maybe they listen. <laughs> My God, what a culture, huh? What a way, but what to do, okay? So in life, if they don't listen, when they're dead, please try to talk into their deaf ears. <laughs> it might work. The Buddha says so. Hmm? Uh, they are better consciousness, okay? But forty-nine days after they die, at the moment, after the moment they die, okay, forty-nine days because that is the time allowed in between the churchmen, you understand, and, and uh, the dead, dead. That's the time allowed. So you cannot always say this word is really that unfair. It is unfair, but there is a loophole that you can use. There are ways you can avoid even if you sin. I don't encourage you to sin, of course, that's why I teach you the five precepts no killing, no lying, no stealing, etc., no intoxicants, and no... what else? Hmm? No sense sexual misconduct. Yeah, I teach you all that to protect you, okay? So you don't have to bother people who come at your time of death and waste their breath and to recite so many things for you and have to do good deeds for you. Why? You are able to do it yourself. Okay, you study good teaching every day when you can, you meditate and you do good deeds. Okay, why have to rely on somebody else? What if nobody else does that for you when you die? What if? Huh? What if nobody even knows that you're dying at that time that you die? Yeah? Most people die in safety, in bed, of course, but not always. Yeah? Some people die outside of the house. At the time you die, maybe nobody knows. You see? So you prepare for it. You make your luggage ready every time, and when you travel to the other world, you are ready and safe and, you know, equipped. Capisco? Yes. Yeah. Don't just listen to me, do it, okay? Don't just come here. Yeah, yeah, Master is right, you're good. And then Master does everything. Wow, you can live the evil destiny forever if relatives pray for them you know, and give offering to the Buddha image and all that, and continue to do good deed on their behalf, you know? What is good deed? Okay, if that person has a lot of possessions, then sell all those possessions, give it to the poor, for example, 
on his behalf, because in, in this lifetime he saved him, he didn't do it. Now he can't take it with him. You sell some of it or all of it and give it to charity, offer it to monks and priests and church and temple, whatever the way you think, on his or her behalf. If you do it good enough, then this person can avoid hell forever even and avoid a bad incarnation forever. Wow, that's I like for the world forever, I like. I don't like the world forever when they talk about hell, but I like this, you know, liberated forever. Wonderful. There are so many ways to practice, understand? Yes. Yes. He will not be born, you know, he will live evil paths forever, destiny forever, meaning he will not be born as low class or animals or born in hell, or, you know, born in hungry ghosts, etc. Mm. And he will be born as humans or gods even, you know, demigods, divas, yeah, and receive supremely wonderful bliss. Accordingly, of course, nah? the surviving relatives will also receive limitless benefits themselves. Not only you do that, you benefit the dead, but you benefit yourself. How wonderful can that be? So you just have to know how. Hmm? You can just sit here and say, oh, it's not fair, not fair, not fair. There are ways to get out of this unfairness. Huh? It's just that nobody tell you. I don't mean you, I told you many times. I don't know how many years you need in order to hear all I told you. But I mean everyone else, like outside people, who has no one to teach them. Hmm? Therefore, before the Buddhas were honored ones, as well as before the gods, dragons, and the rest of the eightfold division, humans and non humans, I now exhort beings of Jambodvipa to be careful to avoid harming, killing, and doing other unwholesome deeds, to refrain from worshipping ghosts and spirits or making sacrifices to them, and to never call on mountain spirits on the day of death. Why is that? Killing, harming and making sacrifices are not the least bit helpful to the deceased. You know, you know in many cultures still nowadays some people die and they kill pig, chicken, lambs, or, you know, cows, anything to you know, to, to, to make a party in the name of the disease. This is, this is the worst thing you could do for the soul who just departed, yeah? as mentioned before. If he is supposed to go to hell, he go faster. If he is supposed to go to heaven, he will be delayed or decrease in his level of heaven that he will go to, understand? Less, yeah. That's bad. Why is that? Okay. Uh, all this killing, harming of sacrifice are the least helpful for the disease. Such acts only bind up the conditions of offenses so that they grow even more deep and heavy. You know, the sin multiply in intensity. The deceased might have been due to increase his potential for sagehood or gain birth among humans or gods in his next life or in the future. But when his family commits offenses in his name, such as above mentioned, his good rebirth will be delayed. How much more would that be the case for people on the verge of death who during their lives had planted very little good Roots. Each offender has to undergo the bad destinies according to his own karma. How could anyone bear to have relatives add more to that karma? That would be like having a neighbor add a few more things to a load over a hundred pounds being carried by someone who had already traveled a long distance and who had not eaten for three days. By adding that extra weight, that person's burden would become even more unbearable. Obviously, no? 
Thanks all the translators, huh? You are really focus. Very good. You don't have to look at me, just concentrate, okay? But when you look at me, you see I'm so beautiful, you forget. <laughs> Beautifully old, <laughs> you forget. <laughs> oh, come, Master, so old, so quick. All right. Uh, world honored one. I see that beings of Chambut Deepa will themselves receive the benefit of any good deeds they are able to do within the Buddha's teaching. That holds true even when the deeds are as small as a strand of hair. Wow! Anybody who listens to Buddha's teaching and do it accordingly with faith and reverence, even just a good deed as a strand of hair, how can any deed be that small? But just meaning that even then you reap the benefit. Wonderful to know that there are way out huh, of this unfair world. Even if the good deeds are as small as a strand of hair, a drop of water, a grain of sand, or a mold of dust. Yeah, but in the Bible, Jesus says the same. Eh? If you have faith, as, even as small as a grain, as a mustard seed, Truly, you will reap reward. Yeah. Truly, the God, God in heaven will know. We know. Yeah, so I told you, many religions, they all boil down to the same thing. Just the Buddha lived longer in a peaceful India. Therefore, he had the chance to talk long, many things. And lucky, Anand was there. You see, maybe other master, Jain master, a Sikh master and a Hindu master or Muslim master or other, you know, maybe forgotten name master. They talk a lot also, they talk a lot, but have no anan. So nobody recorded. You know, maybe some little bit here, a little bit there, and then after all his disciples or followers die, that teaching died with them. Are we also online? Wow! Oh, did you find out how many online? How many? About a thousand, even more. Oh, really? Lot, yeah, it's it's hard to say because it's it's like data, but a lot, a lot. What I mean is, kind of limitless. On here. You will kind of it will increase. A lot, a lot. No, no. What I mean is our capacity. Yes, as as. The as many as they want. It will. It okay. Will increase. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> we have to be grateful that we have such a good place. Fast internet. That's why I told you find good hotel. You know? yeah, good hotel. After that had been said, an elder named Great Eloquence arose in the assembly. I'm checking. Your old master. You know the story of the king with new clothes. No? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Don't think you can cheat me. I have mirror. <laughs> some mirror cheat, some mirror don't. Oh, doesn't matter. It's okay. I'm still the same. No, I'm better. <laughs> you're better when you're older. Some people get better, you know? More wisdom. Yeah. More understanding, yeah? More humility? Why is this? Master, hmm? they tell me we have right now 1,700. Centers. Viewers. Viewers. Watching. People watching the live stream. 1,000. Only 1,000? 1,700 people watching. Why? 1,700 people. Yeah, I know. What do you want to say? No, what do you mean? I don't think it's just people. No, it's a connection. 1,700 stations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each station could be a lot. Yes, correct. Yeah. Because I say, why only 1,700? I have more disciples than that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, sometimes don't work, huh? What? Maybe the one at work is 2 o'clock. Yeah, sometimes they're working or different time, you know. Or, or they don't have connection. 
Well, they take turns, you know, sometimes. You know. Stations, yeah? Connection, yeah. Like Taipei, for example, if they connect, it's just one. But thousands of them are watching together, you know? If they have time, if they're not working, or they take turns to work and they're recording, or they come and, and watch again later on, if they're busy at work. Yeah. This is the thing. The thing is like that. Like that. <laughs> you know, capish. <laughs> when we have the Supreme Master television, at least two billion people watching. At least. Yes, it's only one third of the world, you know, oh, more or less. Yeah. I did not say it's only for initiates. Sometimes outside people are better than initiates. No, truly. Many times, even though they don't know anything, I didn't teach them, but they're good already by themselves. They don't harm anybody. And many times they have better <laughs> experience than you. You know that, yeah? Sometimes they are the one who come to see you. Did you see your master now? <laughs> she is in your living room? No, where, where? <laughs> yeah? Oh, God, you don't see? Okay, master tell you, do this, do that. <laughs> you know? So to help you in this time. This. Sometimes the family member also non-initiate. See master all the time, transform body all the time. And the initiates are deaf, Blind, dumb. Master came today or not? Yeah, she's right here. <laughs> I don't see anything. What did Master say? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Just try your best. Hmm? It's a difficult word. I know all that. I'm not blaming you or anything. I'm just trying all my patience to remind you again, again, and again, hoping that some of my words will stay in your subconscious and help you in the time of trouble or at the time you die. Eh? An elder named Great Eloquence arose in the assembly. He had long since been certified to non-production and was only appearing in the body of an elder to teach and transform those in the Ten Directions. Non-production, meaning no, no more coming, no, also no more dying. He was already very highly a uh, spiritual saint. He appeared in that form of the elder, in that lower level of heaven, in order to ask this and that, to tell this and that, so that they have a chance to tell. You see? The earth, earth star bodhisattva have a chance to explain things, so they benefit others, heaven and world, and hell. Yeah. You should know. The, that's why I told you, you see, he appeared in this elder. That means he's higher. That means his, this heaven is lower. Okay? Now it's a proof that I told you before, that the heaven is just border between second and third world. Why is that, you ask me? You were thinking the Buddha's mother, uh, uh, you know, the mother of the Buddha should be born immediately in a higher heaven. No, she didn't have enough chance. She gave birth to him, she had no time to practice. Therefore, the Buddha had to go to this heaven, not very high heaven, but it's not like astral heaven, to, have, to, to teach her. You see this? Uh -huh. So this is a proof now, yeah? Because if it's a high heaven, then this non-production shades had not to appear in the elder form. You know, he would just keep his form <laughs> in a higher world. Do you mean? Oh, okay. Master, can I ask you one question, quick? Huh? Can I ask you something? Yes. Do someone have to have um, some spiritual attainment to, to give birth to a master? To give birth to a master? No, 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 no. It's just affinity. Affinity with that and this family. At that time, the Buddha had to be born and had to search all over to see which one had affinity with him in the past life or whatever, you know what I mean? My parents didn't attain anything. I borrowed the body of their dead daughter to, to appear here, understand? Yeah. But they, they attained the fourth level, and then, of course, from then they will go higher later. Huh? 
They're on the fifth already right now because I dedicate some merit to them, even though they're not my real, real birth parents, but they raised me, you know, give me all the best they can since a childhood, so I'm in debt to them. So I give them not only physical comfort and house and stuff, but also spiritual merit. Yeah. But as the time of they are passing, they were only fourth level. Then I have to share so my merit, then they went to fifth level, but not high fifth, just lower fifth. Yeah, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> not too much bribery. No? <laughs> I, have, I, have a, I have an excuse to give, you see? I give also more spiritual point to my dogs, deceased dogs, birds, and extra. Apart from that, they they will be naturally be born in higher heaven. But extra I give. Yeah. So Hamid is on the fifth heaven, for example. But other dogs, uh, not all of them, in the fifth heaven. But for I, I raise up one level. I can one level. Yeah. When a disciple uh, who is on the first level or second mm-hmm. level passes mm-hmm. away. What level can you raise that disciple? I can also lift them up maybe one or two levels according to, you know, allowance. And also, then I can teach them continue from there using my other bodies. I don't just have this body. I'm, I have many bodies everywhere, different levels. So I can continue. Hmm? Yeah. It's not like initiation infinito, no. Work hard all the way, even after you die, I will continue to have to work. Even after I die, I still continue to work for the disciples who are left behind or who already attained, you know, went to heaven. Understand my job not finished so quick. No, not so lucky. It's a lot of people checking on our web you know, outside. They like. They're interested. Yeah. I know that because I just met some friends, 30 years, and see them. And they knew everything absolutely about me, up to date. I thought I came to see an ordinary family behaving haha, like an ordinary person, relaxed for a change. No, they told me what I didn't even know on internet, about what you put on internet. <laughs> I don't even know. And then I have to behave like a master, you know, right there. <laughs> God! Our job. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, okay, take a fresh break, you know? Be with just anyone like that. Uh, good people, but not disciples. <laughs> but no, they are like uh, semi disciples. Worse, they are more diligent. They know everything on the internet. I think many of you don't even know. They're like one of the daughters of my friends. She watched The Real Love three times, up to then, up to then. But the father didn't know. <laughs> he said, well, where did you watch that? YouTube. <laughs> I didn't know you put that on YouTube. You understand? I don't know YouTube or iTube, nada. I don't know any of them. I don't know how to get in there, okay? I don't know Twitter, Twitter, nothing. No. They know everything. Yeah. Mm. And they are vegetarian. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Oh, where are we? They're not my disciples, huh? No, huh? Just outside. And I didn't contact them. So thirty some years I didn't tell them what internet to look. I didn't tell them about Supreme Master television. They know everything. So this person is a high saint, they appear in this. Non-production is a level of sainthood, yeah? Yeah, okay. There's so many things translated here, you just know as that, it doesn't matter. So he appeared in this body on the lower heaven of the elderly in order to ask questions and interact so that all beings could hear the earth or Bodhisattva said. Because if there's no assembly like this and nobody asks questions, then we would never know what kind of hell that is correspond to what kind of sinful act on this planet. See what I mean, huh? So he uh, he placed his palms together respectfully. He asked the earth of Bodhisattva, 
great Lord in heaven, they're so humble with each other like that, great Lord. He himself was great saint too. Yeah. Also the Bodhisattva, when they talk together, there's a human one, great one, compassionate one, remember? Yeah. So they say, great Lord, after people in Jambodipa die and their close and distant relatives generate marriage by making meal offerings and doing other such good deeds, will the deceased obtain merit and virtue significant enough to bring about their liberation? Not just born in a good family and all that, but could it be if they do enough to even liberate them or not? Yes. So the earth store Bodhisattva replied, Elder, based on the awesome power of the Buddhas, he is so humble, this one. He always credit to the Buddha's power. Yeah. But it's true also, all the Buddha support him. But he's willing to do that job, it's a hard job. Going to hell and back and rescuing and teaching all these are hard head, you know. Saturated with sins and trouble and wrong views. And he has to teach these people. Based on the awesome power of the Buddhas, I will now proclaim this principle for the sake of beings of the present and future. Elder, meaning addressed in this saying, if beings of the present and future, when on the verge of dying, hear the name of one Buddha, one Bodhisattva, or the Pratekya Buddha, mean the alone Buddha who doesn't preach who doesn't do anything, he just enlightens and liberates himself, understand? But nevertheless, he's a Buddha. Hmm. He just has no affinity to teach, no affinity with others, so he can serve, save. He can save some, but not as great like a Buddha or like a star Bodhisattva. Depends on their vow in the past also, you see? If he didn't vow going to save endless being or all the beings become Buddha before I become Buddha, then he will not do it. Then they will attain liberation whether they have offenses or not. Wow, wonderful. Spread the names of the Buddhas in all directions. That's why Buddhism is great. We tell you the way to do it. Yeah. But other religions also tell you, pray to God, you know? Yeah, pray to Jesus. But you have to do it constantly. So that when you die, you remember. So continue, so when they die, they don't forget. The subconscious don't forget. That's important. Not just the mind, you see. Continue until it ingrained in your subconscious. That even you wake up, you immediately you remember the Buddha's name. And even when you die, you subconscious, you are unconscious, you still your subconscious will remember. Yeah. And the name of the Buddha is you won't become a Buddha if you just recite the name of the Buddha, that's for sure. Yeah. But the blessing from the Buddha will help you even liberate yourself. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay? Yeah, wonderful. Yes? Master, what will happen to the children of Jesus who don't get initiation? Who don't initiate? Oh, they, they, they carry on with you, they go up. If you meditate well, your children will be okay. Five generations, nine generations, remember? Yes. The Master will also take care of them, but make sure they don't do too sinful deeds. It's bad for them, bad for the society. You have to be good, not only for yourself, but for the society where you live. You have to be grateful for all the people who help you, who nourish you, who plant trees for you to eat the fruit, even though you pay for it. But what the use of having all this a bunch of paper and no fruit trees, no farmers, no road paver, no garbage cleaner, no doctors, no nurses, no lawyers to help you out of trouble when you don't know the law, or somebody else oppress you, thinking that you're ignorant of the law and oppress you. See, the lawyer is there to help you also. Doctor is there to cure you. The nurse is there to comfort you and help you to recover. 
huh? many things, many other people. So we have to be good. We owe it to the world to be good. Not to say because you're practitioner, not because the Master say this, say that, also. No, no. It's your duty to be good, hmm? to bring more uh, energy. At least if you cannot help the farmer in any way, apart from buying their fruit, you must give him also good energy by being a good person. The farmer, they don't earn much sometimes, they earn very little because they go through middlemen and supermarket and all that, they earn almost nothing. But they like their job. You see, they love the land. They're passionate about it. That's why when you eat their fruit, you feel some fruit you taste is so good. Some fruit just nothing, shallow, okay? Because the love they put in it or not put in it. Yeah. And then many the same thing, you know, many same category, same likewise. Doctors sometimes cure you well, because he's passionate about it. He loves his job. And he loves the patient. Some doctor gives him medicine. Take you three months and don't recover. Yeah, but some doctors just come in his present and you feel already better. And then he gives you medicine and you recover fast. Love your job. Mm? No job is too low, no job is too high. Just do what you, you do at that time. It's better that you choose a job that you want to do than you put all your heart in it. Then everyone benefits. Huh? Yeah. So be a good monk, good nurse, good doctor, good engineer, good lawyer, good farmer. Huh? Yeah, I was telling you that the farmer don't earn that much. Because sometimes they earn a lot, but the next, next year maybe the harvest is bad, bad. They don't know a better method to cultivate, or the collective karma of the world make drought, or make uh, too, much, too much frost, and they lost the whole harvest. Or sometimes... Uh, locusts come and eat all their plantations. Understand? So don't think you just buy some uh, apple and then you pay, you repay their debt. It's not like that. Farmers are the fathers and the mothers of the people. You have to respect them. Hmm? And when you eat, you be thankful in your heart, as if your parents give you something. Everything you take, you must be grateful not only to humans, but to the God who take care of that. Every fruit you eat, there are some fairies, some angels are responsible for that. They make the harvest big, uh, you know, they do, but sometimes there's a human karma, they cannot help, but otherwise they take care of the fruit that you eat, they take care of the trees, they make the rain, and they make the earth fertile, yeah? They tend to the fruit, bless it with love, so that you eat it, it's, it's a benefit of not only your body, but your mind, your soul, your spirit. That's why you see fruit has light. The light not from the fruit itself, from the fairies, from the gods who take care of that tree, from the tree spirit, from the fruit angels, from the fairy of the field. They're working hard, all of them working hard day and night, just for your one meal. You don't know all that. You must always be grateful. Even if you don't know, you have to give thanks to all that, that, you know, offer me this, this meal. I thank you with all my heart. I always thank and share my merit to whoever I can. I don't just thank God Almighty, huh? I thank all the small gods, the angels, the fairies, and the farmers who make all this for us. God Almighty, of course, you thank. But you see, you have to thank the physical, practical person or the angel who will take care of that. Yeah? Okay. Ah, oh, there's so many stuff I can tell you, but it take forever then. <laughs> okay. So, Earth Bodhisattva reply that if somebody dies and somebody recites even one name of the Buddha for that dying person, then even, even if he has offenses, he will be free. Imagine that, yeah. He didn't say great offenses, small offenses, offenses. That means all kinds. Even grave offenses, you'll be free. If you hear the name of the Buddha or Bodhisattva at the time of death, 
Now you know, the Buddhist countries people, they believe in all this. That's why they recite the sutra, they recite the name of Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, Sakamoni Buddha, Amitabha Buddha, every day, so that when they die, they don't forget. And so when people are dying, they invite the monk to come to recite all the sutra so that they hear the name Buddha again, again and again. So monks and priests, they very busy, huh? There are always people dying. <laughs> But they only listen when they die. <laughs> I probably also have to be patient. Wait until you die, then you listen. Come here to Mama. This way, not that way, that way to hell. Come here. <laughs> and in many sutras, they also even guide the dead spirit, the dead spirit, where to go, which light to avoid, which light to follow. If there is no guidance, no Buddha around, go this way, go that way, yeah. Therefore, people always respect monks, yeah? And even then the sutra also say that, listen here, the spirit, even the monk is not perfect, but you listen to what he tells you and do it. The monk might not be as perfect, because the spirit, he sees everything. The monk comes and he knows who eat meat, who not eat, and who you know, who is so clear in here or who not, or what level. But don't, don't pay attention to the monk. Just listen to the Buddha Sutra. That's what they say to you, to the dead. Yeah. The Buddha knows everything in advance. Some monk might be not good. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's the Sutra that matters. The name of the Buddha is matter. So it's wonderful that the Buddha has found many ways to save sentient beings even after his death. And even the earth or Bodhisattva also continue doing that. You see, that's why they say if you print the sutra and give it all over, then you have a lot of merit. Because who knows who someone is going to be saved, you know, from hell by reading this or believing in this or then turn around to become a better person. Vegetarian, for example. I told everyone to be vegan, vegetarian, of course. But if somebody also reads this sutra, maybe he's scared of hell. He believed in the uh, uh, cause and retribution like that, and he also turned around, then it's good, you see? There are many ways of helping sentient beings. Yeah? You don't have to come and always, you'll be vegan or else, you know? <laughs> yeah.